have Kayborn Rivers here. How you doing, Kayborn? Oh, I'm cooling, man. You know, everything's been all right. You know, been running around, working hard. Yeah, as I expected you to uh, to be doing. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned the other day that there was a program that you were working on that someone was trying to steal. Yeah, uh, I got a program that I started, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me, Tiny from the Black Spades and Musa from Peace December. And it's called Lifestyle Lifespan. And uh, we started about like three years ago. So, you know, we started it for like to bring awareness to the community where as you know, your lifestyle, which is, you know, the people you hang out with, the uh, foods you eat, the, the, the things that you consume, you know, your lifestyle is going to decide your lifespan. You know, how long are you going to be around, you know? And I go from health to everything, man, you know? So we started that program together. And now, without me and Tiny from the Black Spades, uh, we got Musa from the Peace December. Chef Musa, he done uh, took it upon himself to give it to the city. So now the city got a big thing coming out this that they got for the whole month of October called Healthy Lifestyle Lifespan. And they taking the full credit and, you know, and all the things that's coming with it. Whereas we made it for really our community. And, you know, we happy that the city is adding on and making a citywide program. But if you want to make it a citywide program, include us. Include our program. Our program is the programs that made it. So you just can't take that and just scratch off the people that did it. You know, and it, it goes down to, uh, you got Mayor Eric Adams on there. You got uh, Vanessa Gibson on there, the Bronx Borough president. You know, these people is that people that haven't even reached out to our program since they've been in office, not one time. Right. But they both also are two people that attended the first time that we introduced it the program or lifestyle lifespan to the public. They came to every one of the events that we did for lifestyle lifespan. So they are fully aware who are the creators of lifestyle lifespan. You know, it's not like somebody just came from out of nowhere and brought this knowledge to them. And they just, you know, could assume that, oh yeah, well, I assume that I didn't know better. Or they know better, yeah. but they, they came to all the events. You, know you said they, you you said it was for October. Or they only doing it for the month of October. Yeah, it's it's like called a uh, healthy lifestyle lifespan. You know, it's a whole month, and they go into different uh, organizations and different places. And you know, talking about health and mental health as well. You know, it's all, it's all around health. So it's the mental health. It's you know the way you eat, the way you carry yourself. You know, alcohol you drink. You know, everything. You know. Uh, and now they've turned it into a whole citywide program without the people that, and you know, who started it, man, you know, that that's wrong, man. You know, it's not only wrong, it's called you stealing. Right. And then, you know, we don't want to say that we don't want the kids to have it because it is made, we made it for the kids, we made it for the public, but we also made it for the kids and the public to know that we are the ones that made it for the kids and the public, you know? They should, so that, they should, be, going, they should be going to you for the information and advice from what you've already learned. Um, it doesn't appear that they're doing any of that. No, uh, I'm not doing that, you know, and they're just running really basically with the name of the program and the, uh, whatever pieces and bits they're trying to put together, but they don't even know the whole, all the elements of the program to actually get a program a chance to become a great program. You know, they just, oh, we just gonna snatch the name, we gonna snatch this and we gonna run. And, you know, it come more behind it than that, man. You know, we work hard to create that program. And, you know, for just to see it just going and other people running around doing it, you got all these other uh, guys, like I sent you, the flyer. You got uh, Natalia Fernandez. You got uh, the Sapabio Sup guy. You got all of these politicians on here. But y'all always at the initial introduction to the program. So once y'all seen that it was it was being presented to y'all without all the initial people, you should have known that it was something wrong right then and there, mm -hmm. you know? Who are some of the people that, that you've worked with, some of the uh, institutions that you've been working with? Uh, 
Well, you know, like, uh, as far as, like, doing work, I just finished doing a big thing in the park, you know, with the, uh, I did an event for the kids. And I had uh, the police was down there with the Explorer recruiting. We had uh, we had a, somebody, uh, another organization was down there was doing a job fair. You know, we reached out to all the programs, man. You know, we had the, the, uh, the hospital down there checking out for uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. We just try to reach out to all the people in the community to do things that other people really ain't doing in the community and that they neglecting in the community. So we try to bring them resources, you know? Try to try to bring, you know, we have the people that have the mental health awareness programs. We done did that with the mayor and uh with the Thrive NYC. So, you know, all we do to I work with the board of education, go down there, I speak to some of the uh kids in some of the classes and different things. I go to Bronx University, they did a whole special about me uh in Fordham University in black history class. So that was that was kind of strong to see all the students get together, researched on me. You know, it was nice, man. And they did that also. You just that's like a token of appreciation. Yeah. But for us to be out here, you know, and it's not like our programs is getting funded. Because my program ain't getting funded, and neither is uh the black space is getting funded. But these are the things that we have that's we use on the scale to, you know, to prove that we are qualified to be funded. But if we got the city just taking it from us and just using it citywide but not doing funded still not funding us or funding our community what could we bring to the table when you're stealing the whole table from us yeah do you, you think know? this is related to uh, election day coming up next month yeah we have i mean most definitely is you know they trying to look good and you're trying to bring in the health thing and all this but at the end of the day man you need to bring in the people that 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 created these programs you know that'd be a lot better for you to do you know they're doing a terrible job so I don't know who, nobody need to be getting voted in. I'll tell you like this year right here, me, myself, I'm gonna run a campaign, no vote. Cause for what? We getting nothing out of it. They come in our communities and tell us to vote for them, vote for them, and then they leave and we get nothing out of it. We still got the same crime. We still got the same, uh, everything, the same homeless rate. We still got the same unemployment rate. We got still got the same uh, level of people still walking around with mental health illnesses that no outreach is coming to help. So what are we voting it for them for? All I see them doing is a whole bunch of partying and a whole bunch of press conferences and nothing for the people, you know? Vanessa Gibson, she's the Bronx Borough President. I have, I, the only place I see her is on the news and at parties. I haven't seen her nowhere in the Bronx, mm -hmm. nowhere. Unless it was a TV station there and it was some type of big press thing that it was gonna be a whole bunch of publicity. But as far as coming to the communities and to the places where our uh, people need help at and people was out here, she haven't done nothing. You know, when she left the last community she was in uh, on the 170 area, she was covering that. And she had College Avenue, Morris Avenue and all of that. And still to today, it's heavily in crime. So once you got a new position and you became the Bronx Borough President, the first, you know, you should have started reaching out to them areas that when you was in office before, you didn't do nothing for them people. And crime and people was dying, little kids getting shot every day. And uh, she's not doing nothing. And she's not making it her business to reach out to the organizations and reach out to the people that's on the ground that's actually doing the work. You know, every time I see them, like I said, they had a press conference, they on TV. And the same thing with Eric Adams. Every time I see him he's on TV, he's in press conference, he's somewhere where there's a million people at. You know, the lights, camera, action. But that's not where all the problems is at. Right. You know? The problem is where it ain't no lights, cameras in action. You know, we got more homeless people than ever. He said that when he get in, he was gonna do better than uh, de Blasio. And he was gonna do this, and he was gonna do that, and he was gonna do this. Now you go in buildings and there's homeless people in buildings. There's homeless people all over the train station. There's homeless people sleeping in front of Fordham University. There's homeless people sleeping, they got a makeshift uh, tent right on, yeah, Fordham Road, connected to the Metro North, connected to Fordham uh, business bids, connected to Fordham Plaza, connected to Fordham University. You would think that somebody out of all of them would come out and do some outreach work. You're talking about uh, probably billions of dollars worth of money right there. Then you got uh, Burlington Coke Factory right across the street. You got Macy's right there. 
you got Best Buy right there, but nobody is stepping outside to try to help this uh this homeless, high homeless rate that's right here, that all of them go to work and go to their office and have to walk by. You know, well, he has that's an issue that I've been talking about for years now. I mean, I did yeah. one of my videos, if you go on the channel, was uh the homeless in LA. I mean, all over this country, there are more than 500, there's more like 600,000 people that are homeless. And if the if the government really give, gave a damn, they would do something and they're not doing anything. They're not doing nothing about it, it's getting worse. And then the thing about it, like, like we're saying, you know, look at all them big businesses right there, all them institutions. So if y'all ain't gonna do it, then start supplying the people with the right necessary resources and funds that they can have so that we could do it. Mm -hmm. So we can come out here and help the people. We can provide the things that y'all should be providing, but they're not. You know, you, you see they was on the news on, uh, I think it was Saturday. They was on the news and they was showing Como and they had uh, Ruben Diaz Sr. You seen that? No, I missed that. All right, they had all the politicians. I think uh, Vanessa Gibson was there too. And they was giving... No, she wasn't out there. And they was giving out all the food and all that stuff to the people in Hunts Point area. And it was all on the news and it was making a big thing out of it. But if they would have went right around the corner from where they was at, it's a whole homeless encampment right there in front of people living in these buildings. They got stores, just a residential area, but the people have no place to stay. If you go around, if they would have went right around the corner from where they was at, it was 20 people laying on the floor in tents. They got makeshift stoves. They got all of that living on the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and but they brought, but they was around the corner with the lights camera action. They had uh Ruben Diaz Sr. And they had they even had Como down here. But if they have they if they was about anything or really came to help the people, I know every cop around there, because the cop was the cops was around the corner harassing the homeless people. They kept running them off, running them off so the people couldn't see them. But there's so many of them and they didn't have no place to go, and plus it was yeah. raining. Yeah. And they got the uh, scalpel, so they most definitely wasn't going nowhere, so they just kept playing uh, cat and mouse. You know what I'm saying? But none of the people with all the power and all the funding, they didn't even turn that corner. You know, you one know? of the things that the politicians, they haven't, haven't at least discussed it yet, is the impact on tourism. When people read all of the news about people being attacked in the subway or the homeless in the city and people running naked down, you know, whatever avenue, that's going to turn off tourism. And then yeah. they're going to have problems. Uh, but no one is talking about that. Yeah, but, you know, and it's like right now, as by the time January comes and them audits and all that come up, they'll see, they'll feel it like, yo, yeah, and who want to come to someplace and get hurt? That's like somebody inviting you to Chicago right now. No. And, you know, it's a nice place, but uh, I have to pass right now. Until things get, you know, a little calm down, then, you know, it's not worth the risk. And then that's how they make it in New York City, like you said. You know, and the crime is everywhere. And like uh, uh, I was speaking to a couple of people yesterday. The more mentally ill people that's out on the street that they're not trying to help and they're not giving no resources to or no outreach work, and the more homeless people that's on the street that they're not giving no resources or no help to, that is going to make the crime elevate even higher on top of the regular crime that's already happening. Mm -hmm. right. You know? So it's like nobody cares. Or nobody is doing nothing about it. You know, everybody talk a good one, but when it comes down to all uh, the actions, they're not trying to put in the work, man, you know, right. at all. At back, all. In the 70, back in the 70s, we had the uh... The hell's angel, the uh, um, guardians angel, guardian angels. Thank you. Uh, are there any groups like that coming up that you're aware of? Well, right now, you know, you got groups like you got the uh, the cure violence programs and stuff that Vanessa Gibson and uh, Mayor Eric Adams be funding. They've been uh, Bellasio is funding them too. Some of them is effective, some of them ain't effective. You know what I'm saying? But that's like an everyday. That's what's going on, you know, but at the end of the day, they need to fund the groups that's on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's everywhere, that everybody know, that the people want them to fund, that the people follow. 
the people don't follow them people that a lot of them people they be funny. The people don't believe in a lot of them people that they be funny. So you could get them, you could get, you, you know, it's like you bringing, you could bring a horse to an ocean. If he ain't gonna, if he don't want to drink it, what you gonna do? Turn the horse upside down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't do nothing about it. But the reason, the, the reason for that, and, and you know it, is that they promise things and they never come come across with the things they've promised. They never come across it. And then you know, it's like back to what I was saying, it's like. If you're not going to do it, there's other people that would do it. Fund the people. Yeah. Not the people that you think you should fund. Fund the people that the people want you to fund. Because those are the people who, who the community, though, that's the community. So the community already know who they want to follow. They know who they got their faith in. They know what they want to do. You can't just come and say, oh, well, I'm going to give such and such this and change the whole community to follow these people and believe in this. That's not going to work. That's not gonna work. A couple of people may join on, and that may only last for so long because people already got their own way of how they going about things and how they live in their community and how the people that they believe in in their community, you know, and the people that was out there that was doing for them in their community before funding and resources or any of that was even thought of. So they're not just gonna follow a whole new program because you and Johnny Webbo from downtown or whatever, whoever y'all come from feels that for them, this is the proper thing that we feel for y'all community. You ain't from my community, so how could you even feel something for my community? That's right. That's what I talk about all the time when I talk about party politics. Is you can't go into a community and tell them what they need to do. You need to ask them what they need. Yeah. Ask us what we need. Who y'all believe in? Who would we, if we put our money in and we do all this, who would y'all think? And the people are going to be like, well, such, such, such. And those are programs and those are things that the people have been following for the longest. And they yeah. still going to follow them programs, regardless if you came over there with a whole enterprise. They still going to follow the certain programs and the certain things that they was doing because these are things that they feel is good for them. These are positive things that got them and helped them and surviving them and can keep them going on what they're doing. And you, you just can't bring that because you don't know the people, like you said, and you don't know what they want. Right, or what right. they need. Yeah. Now, you know? you know, people like the activists like you and me sometimes, we, we need politicians to create the laws that we need. But if they're not listening to us, the only other recourse is for us, as you've been saying, is to do it yourself. Yeah. To go out and, and what Murray Bookchin used to talk about called communalism. You go out and you form committees in your community and you force the politicians to do what you want with a greater number of people. Yeah. Uh, and what you can do on your own, you go ahead and you do on your own. Now, you're a prime example of that. You have all these programs that you do from time to time uh, and you don't get any help for it. No, nah, no, nah, I don't get no help for none of it. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking like this, too. I think that on the because uh, now they're doing some re uh, districting and things like that. You heard about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so it's going to expand a lot of things and, and make a lot of things different. I think I'm going to get into something, man. I think that after, like, this year, even I'm going to either run for the assembly, run for the council, I'm going to something in my community because I know everybody, you know, and I feel that like there's nobody in this community who's going to get more people to back them than me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you really should, either city, yeah, council, city can, council or the assembly, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can create somebody, you know. So I really think that why why I know I still I'm from the you know from here. So I know if I put it together right, the package together right, and have the right people behind me, that it's impossible for me to lose in this community. Well, the last time I was with you, we were walking down through your neighborhood. I I can't count how many people came over, patted you on the back, and said hi and whatever. So yeah, I know you definitely have a following. Yeah, I'm so, like I literally know. I know everybody out there, you know, you know, they know me or her, you know. Yeah. It's like, so I know if I, if I go out and I got the right people to show me the direction to go in and how to go about it, I, they couldn't stop me. Yeah. You know, they couldn't stop me. Even if they teamed up together, they couldn't stop me. You so uh, uh, about this program that the city is stealing, how, what, what do that you... So, so, yeah, right now I'm just going to try to... Uh, you know, I'm gonna put a lawsuit out because you know you took oh you took the uh my idea 
took my trade, you took the whole thing, you just ran with it. Can can you use it to help to help get funded? So just go to them and say, look, you've taken this idea, so you obviously think it's a good I- idea. Why don't you help fund me? Yeah, but you know, yeah, I feel like that too. But I feel like that, you know, that's a conversation that they should be bringing. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you know, you're the one that's holding my possession. That's like somebody, somebody going to steal your goat, steal your, you know, something from you, and then you got to make the, you know, yo, you know, how about we do this now? That's the thing that you should be doing, you know, because if I would have did it, you'd have been pressing charges on me. <laughs> Am I lying? No, I'd have been in jail. Right. No, you're right, definitely right. Yeah, you know, they I would they wouldn't I would have been waiting for them to make no type of thing. They'd have called the police, they'd have called whatever they had to do, they'd have their lawsuits, they'd have their lawyers knocking at my door, and that would have been the end of that. Who's your council person up there now? Uh uh Karina Sanchez. Okay. Any yeah. communications there? Yeah, yeah, but you know, she was out on uh she just had a baby. Mm. So, you know, as soon as she came in, she had the baby and you know, she was went out on a on baby for the baby. And then we got the other lady that's the assembly lady. Uh I can't remember her name. Yodoka. Uh I'm not sure. I know her from the like before she was the assembly woman on our side, but since she's been assembly woman, I haven't seen a sight now. I haven't seen her one time. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's what happens all over the place. Yeah, I'll be outside and I'll be outside in the community every single day. So I don't want to hear you came through and I ain't seen you. Or somebody ain't see you. Somebody see you. you know what I'm saying? The people don't know nobody in the community. They just come and they uh, they get elected. They stand on their low side and that's it. Ask anybody on any block that Vanessa Gibson been in. Ask one black program that wasn't on the news. I had a news conference. How much support they got from Vanessa Gibson, the the uh, Bronx Borough president? Mm-hmm. That's all. All these people do, they don't support, especially if you're in the Bronx. In the Bronx, they don't fund no black programs, none, zero. They got their system of uh, Latins and it run down from the Bronx Borough president and it run down in their whole system. All the uh, 90% of the council, council women and council men is expanded. 90% of the council men and all that is uh, uh, assembly person is expanded and that's what they running in. And 90% of the groups that they be funding ain't about beans. And they fund them year in and year out and year in and year out and they ain't about beans. And if you go to the people, the people that have never heard of their programs. <laughs> right? You ask the people how effective if they, we take a survey right now and I bring a list out right now to all the, all the programs that these people was funded. And we go out on Fordham Road and we go out on 149th Street and we start asking the public how effective is these programs. And I tell you that bro, bro, they don't never heard of them. People are like, no, nah, I never heard of that. No, nah, I never heard of that. I never what heard about of this. Developers have uh, there's there's a lot of developing going on in the Bronx, right? Yeah, that's what it is about. You know, that's all they do. They sell the land. That's why people ain't got no place to sleep at now. And everybody's running around, majority of people is homeless. Because that's what they're about. They're about property. They sell the property to people. And that's it. They ain't whining about the residents. They're not whining about you. You know? You see, they'll close down the building in a minute. They'll lock down the building in a minute. They will evict somebody in a minute. Where are they going? Yeah, there's no place to go. Yeah. Where are you going to evict them at? To the train station? Mm. Like, where, where, like, where are you throwing them at? Where are they going? Yeah. Like, it's like the, people going? In NYCHA. the people in NYCHA I've been talking to for years, you know, what they finally say is that if they raise the rents. Where do I go? There's no place yeah. for us to go. Here you go. And then you got to figure the way that they are. The property is, is they, they got all the property locked down. The police is running around. They don't care what happened. People just robbing and shooting and killing and drugs and gangs. And it's like it's 1972. Yeah, but it's happening during the day. And, it, and even in 72, it, it yeah, happened one day, but you know, it wasn't as often. The yeah. first day of school, a kid gets shot. Yeah. It's like, you know, nobody have no respect for these dudes because they have no control. You know, you know, once you start seeing, you're like, yo, they do some, some bozos. They're some flunkies, man. And that's how they look at all of their the whole system. People ain't trying to hit them at all. You come to the Bronx right now, you start asking them the public, and nobody never heard of no Vanessa Gibson, man. Because she on the own, or wherever she's at is the same place. Wherever the lights, cameras, action, that they're at the same exact programs 
with the same exact people. Now, if you go look at any press conference that they had or anywhere that they go and look, and you'll be able to, add, once you've seen one of the things, you can see a hundred of them and you're gonna see the same people. So who are you talking to? Yeah. yeah. You know, you can't, you can't protect and save when you're scared. How can you save somebody, man? People can see right through you. Be like, yo, y'all scared, man. Like, well, that's what I've been saying. The politicians don't listen to the people anymore. It's only the donors, and they come yeah. to you when they need your vote. And 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 activists need those politicians to get things done. And you know, we still don't have health care, even though yeah. the Democrats have been talking about it forever. Uh, the streets are dirty. The crime rate is going up. And no one talks about the the immigrants coming into the city. You know, we want to be fair with immigrants, but they need to come in in a legal way. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Everybody, and you know, and here go another thing. You know, they put the immigrants before the people of the city. Well, look at the right now. They just they just feel they going they, to they, uh, to uh, Iraq uh, to um, um, Ukraine. Ukraine. I mean, there are billions of dollars going to Ukraine. Yeah, cities and towns in in this country yeah. need money. Yeah, but we can't. But but we can't get a grant of funding to help the people in our community. Now they just Eric Adams just had a thousand tents put up in Orchard Beach, right? Mm -hmm. I know a thousand people that's homeless in New York City right now. I could go through the whole New York City, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. I ain't even got to go. The Staten Island and Long Island and all that. I could just go, man, I could go from Harlem in the Bronx. I ain't even got to go to Brooklyn. And I could bring you a thousand people right now that need a makeshift tent. Right, right. Yeah. So it's okay for our people to sleep on the train and to sleep outside in the park and to sleep on in, in makeshift things on the, in front of residential buildings or to sleep in me and your building that we pay $1,500 a month for. It's, that's okay, mm -hmm. but it ain't okay for some the immigrants to come over here. You gonna find them a place to stay. You yeah. gonna close down. You gonna close down Orchard Beach. We gonna build makeshift houses. Build some makeshift houses for the people right here, man. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's the it, it's it's the phoniness that that kills me, and you know it's so phony, and then it hurts me a lot because I'm sitting here with all the ability to help. And you know, I'm still doing my thing, so I'm still gonna help because nothing can stop the power of God. But the people that are supposed to help and the people that has the, 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 the right thing and, 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 the, and the force and the big power to push the help ain't doing jack. And what they consider help is not helping. Cause Eric Adams think he's doing a good job with all these kids getting shot and killed. Let me tell you something different. If a Nelson Gibson think that she is a hero in the Bronx, let me tell her something different. Every day kids are getting shot and killed in the Bronx. Way more than before she was the Bronx Bronx president. It's way more crime right now than before she was the Bronx Bronx president. Take the survey. It's way more crime now before Eric Adams was the president, was the uh, mayor. Why do you think there is more crime now? Because they are out partying. They out partying, they out doing press releases. They like the new two rappers who just got their contract. They want to run out. I got, I got, I got to paint the town red. They like two 18-year-olds, yeah. two little kids. Like me and you first got our first two new, new cars to be 21. So we got to drive the whole New York, every block. We got to drive through two miles an hour. Yo, what up, y'all? Yo, what up? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what them two doing. Yeah. They're running around the town trying to be New York famous. What about bail <laughs> reform and, and things like that? Does that have any impact? Man, that's out the window. You know, it's like, I can't fight, you know, I, I feel for the brothers and the sisters that's incarcerated, but I can't help them until I can help the people that's actually right here and try to help the people right here prevent them from getting in there. Yeah, because I, I was, noticed yeah, that. Yeah, we can help the people here, it, then that'll, that'll slow down the flood line of going there. And now we can grab the people and help them that's in there. Because yeah. now we got the time because we already got this. As long as you, you got the people out here running wild, 
Why are you even dreaming about fixing the system? But I, I ask that now because I've, I've seen things that I, I don't know for a fact, but it appears to me a lot of the crime is being committed by people that haven't even been in jail yet. And it just seems it, that the society is just totally whacked. And, and this how it is, you know, and the reason why they're doing it is because, like they said, it's like we did a bunch of things until you got a whipping for it. But your moms and pops tore you up. You're like, whoa. But until you got tore up, it was like you give a, a give you a rope, you won't be a cowboy. Give you an inch, you're gonna take a yard. Give you a yard, you're gonna take a mile. That's what they're doing. They're taking full advantage of, or, or whatever you know is there. There's no type of there's no type of the real help is not being funded, man. The guys that got their foot to the ground and that the youngest respect is not being funded. And after a while, them guys get tired of going outside and yo, 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 and approaching and doing all this for nothing. So they got to end up getting a job or doing something that they really don't want to do because they know as soon as they do a job or, or, or move on, it's over. So they're trying to keep their sources and these dudes will not fund these people. So it's like, I don't know if this they plan to just let things get, you know, to where it is. Uh, I don't know, man, you know? But I know that we just got to keep on doing what we got to do and uh, eventually be more to us than them. You know, either we vote them out or we got to get up there and uh, people got to vote on us because I know I can get them out of there if I if I get on the, on the ballot. And they know I can get them out there too. I just need to, I, they say I just need a campaign manager, a good campaign manager. Yo, I know how to lay out the layout. And I'm going to be there and I, I know what I need to do. So, you know, we just got to get them out of there all ways that we could. You know, we got to protest them the whole every day for election. We got to keep coming out like we're doing now and making videos. We got to get them out of here. We got to oh, get them out. Of here. They're bad for the people. They're not helping the people. They're not, not, you know, even show some presence. You know, presence can stop a lot of things, too, because now the people believe in you. And people was walking around and bumping into Vanessa Gibson and seeing her in the Bronx and seeing her there and seeing her, actually seeing her and getting time to communicate with her if you have people believing in you. Every time somebody sees you on the news or somebody done died and you coming over there talking, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your peoples. Nobody don't want to hear that. Where was you at to prevent these things from happening? Where was mm -hmm. you at to provide jobs and programs so these kids didn't have to take it there? Yeah. So we don't want to see you coming around afterwards when we already asked you for these resources and for these fundings and for these things before these things happen. But you allow it to happen and then you come into the community with blow horns and, and police and uh, the news and you expect the people in the community to feel comfortable and even speak to you or tell you what happened or even give you any input on what happened. First of all, you came in with a whole entourage and you blew it up. So nobody wants to speak to you. As soon as you come, everybody leaves. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it's supposed to be. The people are supposed to be comfortable when they, when they get over there and supposed to stay and feel comfortable and supposed to be ready to, yo, let's see how we can work it out so we can build something around here so we can find out how to stop this. I done been to them with an area where every politician from the Bronx, when a little 16, a 13 year old kid got killed in the Bronx. This was last year on 187th, on my block where I live at right now. Mm -hmm. Every politician came around. The community was saying that they don't want them there because they only come around when people get shot and they don't do nothing, you know, to help the people in the community. I'm down with the community. Because first of all, I live around here. And if I didn't live around here, I'm from the Bronx. And I was born and raised in the Bronx. And I'm going to represent the people in the community before I even dream about being a part of that foolishness. You know what I'm saying? So I was representing with the people. And like, you know, I told them, I said, yo, the people is 100% right. Because there's 20 programs here right now at this shooting for this 13-year-old kid, right? It's 20 programs that's getting money. So you figure that. Out of these 20 programs, it's at least $10 million worth of funding from taxpayers in the city and everybody here, right? When y'all all came, y'all came together. When y'all all leave, y'all all gonna leave together. Who's gonna help the kids around here? Who gonna stick around and be like, yo, what is missing around here that this keep happening? Yeah. You know, do y'all need a community center? Do y'all need some jobs? Do y'all need, what do y'all need? 
Nobody. Yeah. So you came in with 60 people and 20 politicians that all took a bunch of pictures and left. Same thing when they killed Lou Jr. When Lou Jr. got killed, you had every politician. You had the rapper Cardi B. You had uh, Lala or uh, Anthony. You had Carmelo Anthony. You had all these people coming up here. Like this was a, it was a party. It was a 15 year old kid that got killed in the street. And out of all them people that came here, remember Eric Adams was there? Yeah, we gonna do this, we gonna do that, ah! Yeah, there's done none of it. Remember Como was here? We gonna do this, yo, I live around here. They didn't do nothing. The same place where Junior got killed at, up the block is where the 13 year old got killed at, then the 16 year old, then the other 13 year old, then the 17 year old, then the 20 year old. They still haven't, they haven't provided no type of nothing, man. It's all talk, all they do is talk. Then they come to the community, Leave they hundred posters with their name on it around voting time. They flood your whole area with them. You got a hundred posters in your building talking about vote for me, and nobody don't even know who these people are. Yeah. Come on, around this area right here, they should have been at two community centers around here. With all the shooting and killing all that amongst the youngins, they supposed to been at two community centers around here. Put one on this side for them, put one on this side for them, and put every program in the world in there. From job training to a corn studio to to, to, to educational classes, everything in this program. If you want to be a part of this program, man, you can't be doing what you're doing out there. It's sports in here, whatever, it's chess tournaments in here. You want to be a part of this, you want to be a part of that. You'll see that a lot of kids want to be a part of this, man. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to go in there with a cornball that you got put in there. They want to go there with people that they feel comfortable with. Well, that's what God. That's what I mean about creating committees. You got to go out here. I am telling you, I'm, I'm saying saying you can't do that. But I think if you go out and create communities, you decide what needs to be done. You decide who's going to do it, how it's going to be done, and then get these people together and begin to communicate, not necessarily with the politician, but the people that work for them, the people that you can contact every day and just yeah. continue to pound them. We need this fix. We need this. But you have to get as many people and build block by block. Yeah, we already got that, man. We just got to put it all together. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody's tired, man. The whole... Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Tired. My friends tell me that, too. The they're whole... Tired. Tired. They're tired. Yeah. You, got, you got people scared. I've never seen so many people scared in my life. And I'm talking about two-way scared. Mm -hmm. You got one people scared. Because they, you know, they 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 intimidated. You know, people getting killed, people getting robbed, people getting help, people coming to people's houses, cutting them up, leaving them in suitcases. Yeah, all type of mayhem is happening. And then you got the other people that they, the older, little older generation, and they scared because they go outside and one of the youngest come on them and do something that they gonna end up hurting one of the youngest. So they absolutely scared of themselves. Yeah. So if some type of control got to be happening before. This side hit this side, now it's all out war. Now you can forget it. Now you can forget it. Well, we've we got someplace. You know, and that's what it's, it's like getting to, and I hope it, it don't get there, but it's, it's getting worse every day, Mike, man. You know, it's like, and the people who's believing less in the politicians, the police, and yeah, well, after, a while, shoot, man, it, after a while, it's going to be like, you might as well not even mention that you're a politician and going for nothing because ain't nobody going to be in the middle of that. Like, what? Make that shit out of here, man. For all my lives, you're like, get out of here with that, man. Like, now nah, we, we we don't do that around here. You know? We don't do that around here. And that's how they making it, man, to where it's going to be like, nah, we don't do that. And I hear more than more, one more than, I hear a lot of different organizations in different areas saying that, like, yo, man, we're going to start not voting. You know, like for what? Yeah, but the, we, we can't let that happen though, because, you know, I, I hear a lot of people talking about that, uh, about not voting, but what you're doing is giving somebody else the vote and they may not be looking at the same thing you are. More than likely they're not. Um, yeah, but if they not, if people don't feel like they have not a part of their system, and it don't matter who the, uh, who the politician is, ain't nobody listening to you anyway. Well, that's so, what I mean. Like, that, it, yeah, you feel me? So it'll only be like for 
I guess for themselves. Yeah. For themselves. Well, the people, the people have to begin to do the work themselves. Yeah. Because you can't no, rely on the politics. No There's no sense to even have no conversation with you because for what? If we got to protect our own block, we got to educate our own kids, we got to uh, do whatever health wise for our own kids, we got to teach the kids trades, we got to do everything. What do we need you for? We don't need you for nothing. We don't even need you around. We don't need you to come through here. We don't need you for nothing. Now you're talking about the Bronx. This is happening all across the country. This and is happening all, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This all, yeah, that's why it's people. a lot of organizations that's, this is different cities, different states. That's like, yo, we would in no vote. Right, and that's why we, we have people like Bill Gates saying there's a civil war coming. Well, then yeah. the reason why there's a civil war coming is because they're not doing anything. They're allowing it. Right. They're sitting back allowing it. They're allowing it. You're bringing other people here while there's already poor people here. You're taking care of new people, but you're neglecting the old people that already been here. You're neglecting the people that's that's here. That's right there is going to pick a whole bunch of jealousy and envy and hate. Because yeah. yeah. if I'm living on the street, and, and I, you know, law forbid, I, I'm living on the street, and I'm trying to get help. I can't get no resources. And then I see another guy come from Venezuela or wherever, and they housing him over here. And he got an EBT card, and he got this, and he got help, and he got that. I would be feeling some type of way, too. And I was born and raised and been here all my life. I would, I would, you know, and I feel that I would have the right to feel like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how could you say that a person don't have the right to feel like that, but you're hungry? And, these, you know, you over here feeding people and, and giving away millions and trillions of dollars. And people who's right here in our backyard is homeless, hungry. There, there, are people on the, there are people on the streets that have mental health issues. There are people that have addiction issues. And then there are people that have been forced there because they lost their jobs. They can't find yeah. a job and they can't afford the rents. And it, the government is doing nothing to address any of those things. And then they take the money and send it to the Ukraine or some other cockamamie thing. And this is what we have to, the people must force the politicians to act. Yeah. You know, people say you got to vote. Well, voting alone is not going to change things. It's not going to change nothing. All you're going to do is get another person in there that's going to do the same thing. You got to go bang on their door and say, we want this fixed. And it's got to be the people. If the people don't stand up and, and address these issues and say, we want these people off our streets and in institutions where they belong, or get yeah. the jobs that they want. You know, all the people that, you know, how many kids go to school on a daily basis that come out of a shelter? People don't think of that on a regular yeah. basis. You know, that's there are thousands of kids. Yeah, they're already traumatized and, and getting no type of resources, no type of help, you know? And like I tell people, you know, especially with the mentally ill, it's very important, man, for everybody to go, you know, learn, learn things about the mentally ill and, you know, mental health awareness is deep, man. It's strong. And a lot of people suffer from it. Sure. You have one out of five people walking around here with some type of sort of mental health illness, man. So it is, it's just more adding on when, because right now, you know, a lot of that is caused by stress. Some people was born with it. But then a lot, a lot of things come from stress, come, come from anxiety. And if you got to worry, but if you're going to get thrown out every paycheck to paycheck and... Mm -hmm. That's a lot of stress, man. And it's unnecessary stress because you got a job and you're working every day. You know, it, it, these people got to change these laws. They got to change these policies. Or like you said, man, I see nothing but self-destruction in the future. Look at public housing. We should be increasing public housing because of the gentrification that's been going on. But instead, they have to privatize them because they don't want to spend the money to keep these buildings going. I mean, this is planned. They've planned this all along. Yeah. The buildings don't become that deteriorated on purpose. You know, just, just happening. It's planned to get that way. Yeah, especially when you could go downtown. I could, me and you could go downtown right now. And I could find you a building. You could find me a building that's been around for hundreds of years. Especially if you go to Convent Avenue or you go to 57th Street and the buildings still look good. They probably do a little renovation in here and there and there. You come over here, we have buildings that have been, that, that been built Eight years ago, mm -hmm. looked like a bomb hit it. Yeah, 
You know, like what type of material y'all allowing the building, you know, a, a building is being built out of. It's just so much, man, you know, and then they tearing down a lot of the uh the nature houses and privately owned and this, that, and the third. And it's just too much going on without I any. You through, of I took you through the Red Hook houses, which is a block away, and see what those people have had to deal with for the last two years. The whole pavement's built built up mounds of dirt in front of the front of their homes. The, they had a weekend where they he didn't have any water because they were putting in a new water main uh, thing. And this has been like this, like I said, during the two year period or three years now, I think with the pandemic, you can't do yeah. that to people. But why are they doing it? <laughs> like, is, They're is doing it because they want to privatize it. Yeah, but if you look back on, on in the history of that Red Hook, been some people been going through and suffering in Red Hook for decades, man. Yeah, yeah. For decades, Red Hook is always something, and they always oh we fixing it. And every time you, every couple of years, is, is something big out there where it's, the building is falling apart, or, or you know, yeah. And, and, it, and it's no new areas, like you said. If you're trying to help out, it's still the same areas, man. You just never did nothing, right? You know, when you really look at it and you go to the certain areas, yo, oh yeah, this area is tall. This area is like this, this area. It'd be the same areas that been like that since you was a kid, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. No yeah. shame. Right across the street from the from the, the NYCHA houses is a baseball field. I played there as a kid. And four years ago, they decided oh, the soil is contaminated because there were factories there before the, the ball field. Now I'm 72 and I played there as a 12 year old. So that's 60 years that they had- You to just covered this. Right, and it's only recently that they started to do anything. So the fields were shut down for three years. So now they, they've come back and they actually look pretty damn good right now. But still the kids didn't have anywhere to go for that three year period. Mm -hmm. but, but did they turn it back to a field? Oh yeah, they, it's actually beautiful. They they have right. dugouts and yeah, really really looks good. You no, know, usually when they pull that stunt, it come back a building. Yeah, no, no, this time it, <laughs> it's not going to work out. Yeah, yeah, when they pull that stunt, oh, we going to bring open this back up to the you come back. It's a big tall building, and that's yeah. another thing. If you see right now, a lot of the buildings in the Bronx that was um abandoned buildings, right? That they said that they was going to open back up to be low income house, low income buildings and all that. The actually hotels. Yeah, right. They got about 30 or 40 new hotels all over the Bronx. Like what? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody coming up here to sleep, you know, this ain't this ain't Harlem. I mean like this ain't downtown Midtown where everybody running up here to tourists. The tourists we stop at a certain point. Why is the Bronx opening up 20 new 30 new hotels, man? Why? Yeah, because they get paid well. They get paid, you know, they spend $400 a night for people and they're all privatized. They they they, they use that money for the their own profits. Yeah. Same I'll thing happened at Sunset Park, which is our neighbor uh, to the uh, north. And they had six hotels too. Yeah. Um, it was crazy because if you look and, and they pop up so fast, Mike, I swear, on yeah. every other block, if I take a walk from like uh, 205 Bedford Park in Webster to like 161st in we and, and, and just walk up and down a couple of blocks, probably like 30 hotels, man. And most of them, you've never seen them before until you go. And you walk by them every day. Mm -hmm. Does something make you even look at the door? You'd be like, oh, man, they turn this to a hotel? And it'd be like a holiday inn or something, like a nice inn, a real, you know, real hotel. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. In, in a regular building. And then you're looking at the building like, yo, you know, this is where we should be living at. This is the building that y'all said that's supposed to be low income for the people. So, you know, they got so much crookedness in there. You know? The, the low income when when you have to make $85,000 a year to pay rent is not low income. Where's that low at? Exactly. Yeah. That must be low in uh, Beverly Hills, huh? Yeah. You're right. Beverly, <laughs> yeah, yo, look, you're in Beverly Hills, they calling you a bum with that. Anywhere else, you're doing hell of a good. Yeah. Come on, who 
low income. And don't forget, this in the Bronx. Yeah. Yep. So on a on a on a good note, um, how's your latest music going? I mean, I heard you you had an album out recently. I listened to some of it, and I think your yeah. daughter had had an album too, right? Yes, she got a uh, my daughter Alexa V. She got a single out right now called Diamond Doll, mm -hmm. and it's doing pretty good. You know, uh, it's getting a lot of views. Then me and her got the record out together called uh, Guns Away. Yeah, and we got close to almost two hundred thousand views right now just on YouTube alone. So that's doing real, real good. You know, so just trying to push positive music. And then I'll be, you know, I'm the chief editor to Behind the Scenes magazine. So I'm just trying to go on all platforms to push some knowledge and push, you know, some positive things to the kids, man, and try to teach them something on all platforms, from music, you know, to the ones who can't see that, you can't hear that, you make it see me in the video. You know, you can't do that, and you can read it in the book. You can't do that, and you can see me outside, you know, when I'm on putting, putting in the footwork. But, you know, we're trying to reach the people on all levels, especially the youth. Yeah, yeah. Now, um trying to think there's a guy that i know from the green party i'm wally um trying to think what i'm wally's last name was and he has the black black fest festival i think it is where he's mm. pushing uh he's a vegan and he pushes uh you know the vegan diet maybe i should connect the two of you together yeah yeah that'd be good talk about something I'm, I'm Wally at Wally. Yeah. I, I yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that'll be good, man. You know, because at the end of the day, we got to, uh, some got to give, man. You know, we done put in too much work for that. We worked for years for that program. You know, it took us years putting that together. This this would have been like the, uh, but our fourth, an our fourth anniversary coming up, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. for, you know, to see it in the schools and see it everywhere, that's an accomplishment. I'm proud of it, but, uh, we need to be the ones that, that they know that we the ones that put that together. So some of these kids can get together and, and want to, oh, word, they can do that. Oh, this brother can put this together. I could do that too. Yeah. And start doing things. You taking away from what we did it for, man. You know, yeah. this ain't, you know, you putting it, this, this ain't no stuff that the city just popped up with and did. The city had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Yeah. You know, this is three people who got together and put this program together, not the city. Yeah. We don't mind working with the city and the city using it because, like I said, we made it for everybody, but we made it especially for our community and for the youth in our community, for the people in our community. Well, it was uh, it was good seeing you today. And after I get finished with this move that we're going through, maybe I'll drop by and say hello in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that that sounds good. Yeah. And hey, yo, look, you won't be that far now. No, I won't be that far at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, You're I mean, tra traveling the Bronx from uh, Red Hook is a real <laughs> bar. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and, I, and, I, and that's anyway. I don't care if you in a car or on the train. It ain't no easy way from Red Hook to the Bronx. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I have a ain't lot of no friends in the Bronx. They hate coming here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, look, they in all far Rockaway. I should be like, oh man. Whew. I should stay out there too at one time, man. You know, I like it out there, but boy, it just takes so long to get there. You know, you'd be like, man. When I was out there, I, I used to go to the Bronx every blue moon. Like, man, listen. Yeah. I had a friend of mine that was in a band out there. I think I went there once. Uh, it's too far. <laughs> yeah, it's far. Yeah. Yeah, you look, I used to be on the train for the longest, and then by the time I'd be all re restless and all that, I'd just be on Nostrand Avenue. Ah. Like, wow, I ain't getting nowhere. Yeah. I still got to go to Manhattan then to get to all the way up Fordham Road. Do you know Anthony Beckford They're talking about Nostrand Avenue? That name sounds familiar. Yeah, he was running for city council. I think he's running. Yeah, 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 I know who that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I know who that was. Yeah, yeah I know he's, Anthony. Yeah, he's a good friend. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. 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 So, all right, Mike, man, let's keep in contact, man. It is always a pleasure to speak to you. I appreciate you. And uh, anytime, man, you know you always can hit me up. And we can build. Man, anytime you need, you know, something to tell the tell the people, let me know. All right. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.